one of the hardest things for students when they're first being introduced to series is how do I know which test to use for which kind of series? There's so many different tests out there, and indeed, what I'm doing in this video is I'm giving you eight different series, and we're doing a matching game to figure out what kind of test should I apply to which series. And then all the way at the end of the video, I'm going to step off the screen and I'm just going to put up the full answers for each of those. And if you want to fast forward and check out any particular one, you're welcome to do that. But I'm not going to present through the answers. I'm just going to present through how I choose the method to apply. So first up, I want to go and look at the geometric series. So there's all of these ones I have to figure out which is going to be the geometric series. Geometric series was how we began the course. So the point is, I want to find something with a fixed ratio. And indeed... If I look at this second one that we have here, well, that second one has a sort of ratio in it. It's a 2 to the power of n and a 5 to the power of n. It, it kind of looks like 2 fifths to the power of n. The only problem here before I can directly apply the geometric series is that there's an n minus 1 and an n plus 1. It doesn't quite align. So I can pull out two factors of 5 from that denominator turn that plus 1 into a minus 1, then it lines up exactly with the geometric series. I can apply it. R is 2 fifths, so it would converge. So that was the geometric series. We're already done with one of them. Now, what was next? The next one we saw was actually the integral test. And the integral test said that if you have a series, you can look at the corresponding integral where the function is just the replacement of n with x, and if that integral converges, then so too does the original series. Now, many of these series, it doesn't make sense to use an integral test on. For example, we can't really have a nice function representation of the factorial term. Minus 1 to the x is messy, although there's some ways to deal with it in terms of cosines, but it's just challenging for us. Some of the ones we have on this side with square roots into the power of n's, they're just, if you try to integrate them, they're going to be really hard. But there is one that is screaming out to be integrated, which is this one with this negative exponential down here. In this scenario, if I consider the improper integral 1 up to infinity of x e to the minus x squared, well, for that, I can do this. It's going to be a u substitution. It will take a little bit of work. You can see my full solution at the end, but I could do this. It's going to turn out to converge, and so too does the original. In truth, while I introduced the integral test relatively early on when we were talking about series, I usually leave it a bit as a last resort. If I can apply a lot of the other methods, they're often simpler. And I'll do the integral test at the end if nothing else seems to be working and it appears like something I could integrate. Now, carrying on. Uh, the next one I want to talk about is alternating series test. And the thing to note here is that there's actually two different series that I've put up on this list that have this minus one to the n. So it may be one or both or neither of these. So there's two series that are candidates for alternating series tests. Alternating series test is perhaps the clearest. If you don't have a minus one to the power of n or n minus one, then don't use the alternating series test. Now, there was a condition on the alternating series test. It had this minus one to the n, but the other portion of it, whatever was left over, had to be positive, decreasing, and have limit zero. Now, the top one of these has those conditions. It's decreasing is positive, and then the limit of 1 over root n is zero. So the alternating series test applies to the top one, and it converges. But for the bottom one, logarithm of n is positive, but it's not decreasing, and it doesn't have limit zero. So actually, it's only the top one that's going to be alternating series test. This one we still have to figure out. Now, what can we do here? This one is a divergence test. So how do I do divergence test? Divergence test is I don't look at the series. I look at the sequence. And if the sequence goes to something that's non-zero, then it diverges. Indeed, if I look over here, there's the plus and minus thing. But the logarithm goes to infinity. So as n goes large, it goes really large positive, really large negative, even larger positive, even larger negative. It certainly doesn't converge to zero. The sequence doesn't converge to zero. And if the sequence doesn't converge to zero, then the series diverges. I actually like doing divergence test often first. It's often the very first one I test because it's pretty easy to do. Doing the limit of the sequence is a relatively straightforward calculation. It sort of repeats what we did back in Calculus 1. So I'll often do a quick divergence test first before I go any further testing other methods. So I put this forth, but if you want to do it first every time, go nuts. 
All right, so that gets four of these, and now I'm going to move them over so I have a bit of space to work here. I've got these other four to do. The next one I want to talk about is comparison test and limit comparison test. We'll do comparison test first. Now, the whole point about the comparison test is that you have to have it compared to something you can do. And there's really only two things that we know how to do very well. There's geometric series and there's P-series. We know when geometric series converge and we know when P-series converge. Now, both the top and the bottom in this scenario have something that looks like a quotient of polynomials or with square roots, but in the limit as n goes to infinity, the top and bottom look a lot like P-series. They look like some power of n. So these are the types of ones I want to apply the comparison test to or the limit comparison test to, particularly if you've got these nice fractions. The middle two don't really work for a comparison test. n factorial, there's nothing easy to compare that to to make it look like a P-series. If I look at this one that's to the power of n, I don't see how I could make that look like a p-series or a geometric series, but the top and the bottom one, those I have a hope for. Now, for this top one, where I'm going to apply the comparison test, it is a n on the top and an n cubed plus 1 on the bottom. So what I'm going to say that this is less than, what I'm going to compare it to, is a bn that is just 1 over n squared. Think of this as actually an n on the top and an n cubed on the bottom that cancels to the 1 over n squared. Notice this is very dependent on the inequality here. The fact that it's a positive one in the bottom means the an is smaller than the bn, and we can conclude that because the bn converges, it's a p-series with p equal to 2, that so too does the an by my comparison test. So that brings me to the limit comparison test. Now, there's only three remaining. I already suggested the bottom one is going to make sense for these comparison and limit comparison ones, but why would I not do the comparison test on the bottom one? Well, I might think of guessing that this is kind of like root n cubed over n to the fourth, but the signs work the wrong direction. This is not less than that. It's not less than the standard bn you might guess. It's greater than it. I'm saying greater than a convergent thing tells you nothing. So I can't do the comparison test even though it's nice and easy. I have to do the limit comparison test. So if I choose my an to be what I have, my bn is highest power on the top, highest power on the bottom, and you can manipulate this and have it 1 over n to the power of 5 halves. I'll note that when you're doing comparison and limit comparison test, it's some examples mean you can only use limit comparison test and not comparison. Some examples you can only use comparison and not limit comparison. So be free to use both. Generally, limit comparison test is a bit stronger and applies to a wider set of examples, so keep that for sure in your tool belt, but you might have to use both of these. All right, that leaves the ratio test and the root test. So what are we going to do here? Now, the root test is kind of like the alternating series where there's that minus 1 to the n that you just want to focus in on and say, that means I want to use an alternating series. Well, for the root test, the big clue here is that in this second one, we have to the power of n in our expression. It's a whole bunch of mess to the power of n. And indeed, the root test is designed to make those types of series really nice. So if you see a whole bunch of messy stuff to the power of n, think root test. Indeed, if I do this, if I take this limit of the nth root of it, the nth root is like to the power of 1 over n. There's always an n there, so it cancels. And I'm just looking at what the limit of this inside does. This goes to the value of 3 halves, which is bigger than 1 that you need for the root test, and so it diverges. And then final one, I guess, is going to have to be the ratio test just by a process of elimination. But maybe what I would say is that the one if I didn't do this last, if this was just first, the big thing that clues in for me that it's a ratio test is that factorial term. Factorials work really, really, really nicely with ratios, as does a number to the power of n. In fact, you might think this looks a little bit like a geometric series because of that 3 to the power of n, and you might recall that... When we talked about what the ratio test was, it was trying to relate series to the geometric series. So things that are mismatches like this, where there's that 3 to the n that might make you think geometric series, but there's also something like an n factorial that screams out ratio test. Nonetheless, you can go and take this limit of the an plus 1 all over the an, and in this case, I'll show you the algebra at the end, it's equal to 0, and so that this limit is going to converge by the ratio test.
All right, that was me just speeding through these eight different series, not doing all of the work that you would need, but just trying to talk about why would I use what method when. And I'm just going to step away and I'm going to put up the full solution to all of the eight series now. Thank you.